Hey, what is going on? My name is Wes and I am the entrepreneur's entrepreneur. When I was in kindergarten, I would walk my wheelbarrow down to Brookside Park, dig up their dirt, take out the weeds and rocks and sell it to the gardeners around the neighborhood. As I entered elementary school, I took up door to door shoe shining with my buddy. When middle school hit, we started doing address curb painting where we'd go door to door and pass out flyers with an envelope on it. And if anyone wanted their house number painted to the curb in glow in the dark paint for safety reasons, we would come by the next day to an envelope with $20 in it. And we'd paint the address on their curb without ever having to talk to them. Many of them were very surprised when a child shows up to do the job. As high school hit, I took up web development, car detailing and lawn mowing. College transitioned me into the bar and restaurant ownership. And then after college, I transitioned into high growth, scalable startup companies. I founded a business called Beta Blocks, which is a four equity business incubator. We help startups get off the ground and provide them with a wealth of assets that they need to accelerate their progress. Things like office space, which I'm in right now, access to investors and advisors. Each company that comes through our doors pays us 5% of their business. If they fail, we make nothing. If they succeed, then we take a pinch. I've been doing this for 10 years and have acquired part of hundreds of companies doing around $100 million a year. Money.com, AKA Time Magazine, referred to my operation as a mini business empire. I've raised venture capital dollars, liquidated equity to a variety of buyers and made a career out of it. I've never had a job. By every quantifiable mechanism available, I've succeeded except for one, and I'm working on it. And in my world, the only things that matter are liquidations, investments, traction, growth, and attention. We obsess over these things, and they all have one thing in common. They take place in the future. When I first started after college, I was a young man. I was an extremist, a risk taker, and I'm still, unfortunately, all of those things. But back then, it would mean that I would put absolutely everything that I possibly had into my company. In my world, there was little room for family, friends, or hobbies. It was just work. I would tell myself that sacrificing all of those things was going to be worth it because of the feeling that would come when I reached the finish line. Well, as we discussed earlier, there are th three or four things that justify that I'm here at that finish line. The things that I dreamt about for years have been checked off my professional bucket list. And was it worth it? Yes, mostly, but not for the reasons that I had originally thought. The way I would describe the finish line is anticlimactic. I remember the largest single check that I received, debatably the most important characteristic of a finish line. After the check cleared, I hadn't even told my wife. My friends don't even know what happened. They're probably gonna have to ask me about this after watching this video. It was such an afterthought, but how could this be? How could the things that I sacrificed everything for not even be worth a Facebook post? To answer this, I had to do a profound amount of introspection. What was wrong with me? The simple answer is I have an unhealthy obsession with the future. Over the last 10 or so years, I've developed insomnia because I couldn't stop obsessing over the finish line when my head hit the pillow. I wasn't mindful or present with my now wife, God bless her patient soul. I let certain friendships drift away from me because I internally mocked their career paths in comparison to mine. I used to make Brad Pitt and Fight Club look weak, yet I withered away because I claimed that I didn't have any time to work out at the gym or eat right any longer. Those were self-inflicted injuries. I thought that they were just the cost of doing business, but really they were just the cost of my obsession with the future. I wasn't striving toward my dream. I was living it. I just didn't realize it. The only wake up call that I could get was when I finally got there and it didn't feel any different. I had to stop and reevaluate where I had misstepped. What I've learned is I am indeed proud of my work and what I've accomplished, but not because of the things that come when you reach the finish line. It was because of the journey itself. I thought back to the entrepreneurs that I've helped. I've thought back to the employment creators, uh, employment opportunities that I've created. I've thought back to the customers whose lives were better because of the solutions that we manufactured for them. Yes, I walk in the direction of the finish line, but my new outlook on life is the finish line is the walk. In any career, we need to have an eye on the future, the end goal, or we don't know where we're going. 
We also need to have an eye on the past so we don't continually make the same mistakes. I think that where most people un understand all that to the mo for the most part, but where they and myself have messed up is what percentage of our care we put into these things. I believe that we should put about 5% into looking backward, about 5% looking forward, and care about what's going on around us today and this week and right now with 90% of our effort and resources. We'll be better workers because we'll actually get the stuff that's in, immediately in front of us done. We'll be better family members and friends because we'll be more mindful of their lives and appreciative of the time that we get to spend with them. My attitude used to be that all of these sacrifices and all this living in the future was what made me a better entrepreneur. It's what made me different. But looking back, I believe that with discipline, I would have been a better entrepreneur had I lived in the present. Caring too much about the future makes you a perfectionist. You constantly want to tweak, fix every bug, create better and more beautiful design. But all of these things come at the sacrifice of the things that, that actually finish. How much more could I have accomplished if I'd finished more things and only perfected the stuff that required it? I see many entrepreneurs making the same mistake. They write business plans for years, try to raise money without risking any of their own and constantly put off launching because what they can create right now doesn't look like what their dream or their future product looks like. These habits result in failure 100% of the time. The opposite end of the spectrum is just as unhealthy. Those with whom worry about the past become paralyzed with fear. They're worried anytime they see something that looks similar to a difficulty that they had in the past, and they slow down in an effort to de-risk the opportunity, which is something that's not actually possible. They take successes that they've had and constantly try and jam it into whatever the present problem is because they can't imagine a world where a new problem could require a new solution. But it's the entrepreneurs who obsess over what's happened to them right now that turn into the biggest winners. They are more observant of their customers and thus craft solutions to what they're actually asking for. They're more mindful around partners and collaborators, which makes those people want to risk more on them, making it easier to recruit the army required to grow. They're more mindful of their bodies and thus can eat and exercise with enough balance to sustainably keep up with their demanding careers. And they're more mindful with their family and friends when it comes time to being with them rather than never actually really shutting off when it's time to shut off. I think back to the countless hours that I spent dreaming about the end and how to get there. And then I ask myself, how much value was actually created in those times? The answer is a little but it's, very, it's only valuable for a little bit as it's unveiling your map, telling you where to go. But very quickly, once the map has presented itself, it's time to put the thing in your pocket and to start hiking. Some people might refer to this as a law of diminishing returns. So what does this mean for me? For me, it means that I'm going to all but forget about finish line-esque accomplishments and instead just enjoy my work day. I'm going to obsess over the fulfillment and happiness of my employees, partners, and customers. And I'm going to do all of those things during appropriate hours throughout the week, or I will try. And in between those blocks of time, I'm going to obsess with the people in my personal life. What can I do to make their lives better? What can I do to see them more often? I've also started a series of rituals in my day and week that I refer to as mental palate cleansers. You know how when you go wine tasting and they give you certain things to eat or drink between testing various wines so that you can actually taste the difference? Well, mentally speaking, we need to cleanse our palates when it's time to stop working and start living your real life. So when I finish for the day, I go on long walks around the park, often with my wife. I take in the scenery, I reflect on my day, I appreciate every leaf, tree and passerby. As an alternative to a walk, I also use an app called Flow State Systems, which provides me binaural beats, which is a fancy term for a type of music that allows you to concentrate, whether it's on work or relaxing. So I put on my headphones, listen to the relaxation setting on the app for 10 minutes while my brain waves sink out of work and into the new present moment. When I finish, it's almost as if my mind has rebooted and is ready to start fresh. From there, I can go out to dinner with friends or attend a sporting event, or even just watch Netflix and relax without constantly thinking about tomorrow. Ironically, this makes me more prepared to take on tomorrow.
And my last palate cleanser of the day is I use guided meditations before bed to help me stop thinking, period, because it's time to literally dream and to stop figuratively dreaming. So what does all this mean or could mean for you? For you, it means that you really need to evaluate whether you're on a path because of what your life will look like when you reach the finish line, or are you on a path where you like what your life looks like while you're on the path itself? Think about how crazy that sounds to think that so many people, myself included, choose the thing that defines their life by what it will be like when it's over, done, or gone. When you put it that way, it sounds ridiculous, but it happens all the time. I hear entrepreneurs say things like, I'm going to build product A, which will give me enough money or power to build product B. At which point I say, why not just build product B? Or I hear people say that they're just going to put in their time at fill in the blank corporation so that they can get a raise and a promotion to simply oversee just more people that are putting in their time. I urge each and every one of you to set down a path that to a certain extent you enjoy every minute of. I urge you to be more mindful of the things that you enjoy about your day, not what you enjoy about finishing it. I urge you to obsess with the little things that you accomplish every week rather than the big things that happen every decade. I urge you not to sacrifice a single unnecessary second with your family and friends. I urge each and every one of you to have a healthy obsession with what is in front of you right now. And with that, that is the end of my TED Talk. Thank you.